Now that we're ready to begin coding the rest of our application, we're going to start with the base template. So the base template is going to be the base structure for all of our templates. So anything that we want to reuse on other pages, instead of having to constantly copy and paste it into them, we will have it within the base template and extend it. So things like our header and our navigation and our footer, and that will just reduce the amount of code that we need to use. So before I go ahead and get started with that, in the last video, I showed you a command to activate a virtual environment. So I just want to highlight there is a way to get it to automatically activate. So what we would need to do is add the extension. So if you search for Python, there's one here with IntelliSense. So if you install that, it will install some Python plugins and um, support for that. So once that's installed, if you're on a Windows, you can type Command Shift and P and from here you'll be able to type python and select interpreter so what that will do is give us a list of interpreters and we we pick the one here which is the one we created and select that so now whenever we open a new terminal it will run a command and automatically activate it so it will just save a little bit of time and obviously then you won't forget to activate it and start globally installing packages so now that that's done, we'll go ahead and we're going to create a template at the root directory. This is where we're going to store all of our reusable templates. So it won't just be the base template that goes in here. Our error pages, because they will be common among all pages, will also go here. And everything to do with our authorization, like login and sign up and things, will go in here. So we'll start by creating a new file, and we'll call that base.html. So I'm just going to create a bit of boilerplate in here before I go ahead with the templating because when I explain how that works I'd rather show the visual aids. So if we hit exclamation mark um, tab that should create us a little bit of boilerplate. So we'll just go ahead and save that. Now in order to be able to see this, we're actually going to create the home app and a view so that we can render a, a page and we will extend the base. That way we'll be able to see what we're doing as we're coding it because we've no way to actually load the base properly otherwise. So we're going to go ahead and run the command python manage.py start app so that is the command to start the app so we then need to give the app a name so i'm going to call this home okay so when i refer to apps throughout this tutorial the main recipe tutorial is the overall app but Django is built to be modular, okay? So we within our app, we will have several smaller apps that contain related functionality to that section of our website. So the home app, for example, is going to have our index.html. Later on, we will have a recipes app, and within that, anything we do with creating, reading, updating, or deleting our recipes will be contained within there. For part two of the series, we will then be implementing a meal planner. So again, we would have our own app for that. So we'll now see here we have the home app. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to create another template directory. Okay, so as I said, our base template directory um, in the root is just for our reusable ones. So within each app, we will have another folder which is going to be called templates. So within that templates folder, we will have another folder and that will just be the equivalent name of the app. So all of our templates are going to live within here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file and I'm going to call this one index.html because it's our home. So now what we want to do is we want to take everything that is in that base.html file and we want to load it into this one. So here we can use the extends keyword. We have our curly brace percentage syntax. Then we say extends and within quotes we can give it the name of the 
HTML page that we want it to extend from. So this will allow everything on that base to show on our home page. So when we go back to styling the base, we will be able to see it. So before we're able to see that, we actually need to create a view. Okay, so a view is the back end piece of code. It's a function that we're going to make that tells Django that this is the template that we want it to load and any other logic that we need in order to send data to that template. So I'm not going to use the um, Django shortcuts, the renders or the functional views. So functional views are defined with the def keyword and we're going to go ahead and use class based views. So we'll get rid of the boilerplate code here and we will say from django.views.generic import template view. So a template view is just a generic class based view that will allow us to load a template. So there is other functions that we can put in there if we want to send data back, but the likelihood is we will change this later. But for now, because we just want to render the page, a template view would be sufficient. So we'll go ahead and define our class. So we're going to call this index and we're going to pass in the template view so it knows what kind of view we're going to use. So in order for us to load that page, the only thing that we need to do here is specify the template name that we want it to load. So we can say template name is equal to home index dot html okay so we're using home because it's within our home app and index.html because it's the file name so there's a few more things that we still need to do to get it to run so we need to create a url for it so within our home app we will create a urls.py file so as you remember from the first video, we have this urls.py file that was automatically created when we started the project. So the reason we're not putting the URLs in there is because of each app that we're going to have quite a few different templates in them. If we were to load them all into the root one, that file would just be overly long and it can just get very messy. So because we want to keep these things modular, we'll keep the URLs within their own URLs file and then we'll be able to include them in the main. So that way that one line of code could load our five or six views from the app. Okay. Syntax for this one is from Django dot urls import path okay so we need the path in order to tell it you know this is the path that i need you to build we'll go ahead now and we'll import the view that we're going to use so we'll say from dot views import index okay so from dot views just means the views file in this directory and index was the name of the view that we wanted to load so the next thing that we do is we define our URL patterns. So this is a list of our paths. So for each one, we will have a path and it will have three separate inputs. So the first input is the actual URL. Okay, so imagine you go to a news website and it might be, you know, my super fun news forward slash articles forward slash sports okay that is a url pattern so the first part of our path is we're specifying what we want that url to look like okay so we're going to leave it empty because this is going to be our root directory which means we just want you know when you go to our website that this is the first thing that is loading so the next input that we need to put is our index so that is the view that we want to load and we will specify the as view function so that it knows that that class is a is a view the next thing that we're going to give it is a name 
Okay, so later on in the application, we'll be referring to a lot of these by name. So in our navigation bar, for example, instead of having to specify lots of links, we can just specify the name. That will then go out to the URL paths and it will look for something with that name and we'll be able to load that in as a href for, for clicking on our links and things. So we're going to go ahead and call this one home because it's our home view. So the last few pieces then are we need to update the main URL.py in order to tell it to load our home URLs. So we'll go ahead in here and open up our main URLs. So one thing that we do need to do in here is we need to add the include package from Django URLs so that we can tell it to include. So we will create a new path and this time we are only going to be passing two arguments in it. So the first argument is going to be the prefix of that app and the second part is just we're specifying the URLs. So when I say the first prefix, so if you had a website that was my awesome recipe site, okay, that is our base URL, that is just the standard first page that you come to say for example then we wanted it to say forward slash recipes so if I said recipes as the first part of this then my would be base domain forward slash recipes forward slash new URL pattern from my URLs.py but because we want this at the root domain we are going to specify it blank the same as the other. So what that will mean is that the URL that we load for the index will just have our domain, okay? And that will load our page. So again, we'll give it a comma and then we're going to use the include to say home.urls, okay? So that will then know that it's going to go out and find the URLs file within the home app. So we'll put a little comma after and we'll save that. The last piece that we need to do to get this working, and we will have to do it repeatedly, is currently we have specified our view, we have made our template, and we've created our URL pattern, and we've added it, but Django doesn't actually know about the app. It doesn't know it exists. So we actually need to install that app so that the rest of the app is aware that it's there. So we'll open the settings.py file and we will scroll down to the installed apps and here we can add our apps so we can just specify home. So now Django will know that our home app exists and it will have access to those files throughout. Okay, so now that we have it installed in the home app, there is one small change that we also need to make in our settings files. So in order for it to understand that our templates are within their own apps, we need to alter our settings to tell it what structure that holds, okay? So we're going to go ahead and find template section here. And you see this directories is blank. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna update this. So we'll open it up and we will do os.path.join and we will say base directory or well base there and templates. Okay so what this is going to do is it's just going to join the path of our base directory and tell it that our directories are within template folders. So now that we have that done, we should go ahead and open our application. So we can do the python manage.py run server command and open our app. As you can see, there's nothing on it, but that is because our template has nothing on it. So we'll open back up the base template and we will type a heading level one in here and just hello. I am bonkers. So we will switch ahead now and refresh our site. And now we can see it. So as you can see, everything within our base template is now loading with our index because it's our index.html that is loaded. So we are inheriting all of those things from the base template. Now that we have this set up and we've confirmed it's all working, we're ready to go ahead and start coding our base template.
Before we finish up and get started on the base HTML, we'll go ahead and commit our code. I just want to draw attention to the red text in the terminal. So obviously this has been here since we created the app. So this is not an error message, don't panic. Um, it's to do with applying the migrations and setting up the tables for the, the Django admin. So I purposely have skipped past it for the minute is because I don't wanna jump through to too many topics and we don't need it quite yet. So when we actually need to start using it, I will explain it in detail. So um, just ignore it for now. You don't have to do anything if you don't want to. If you do want to go ahead and run it, that's fine. I'll explain it a little bit later anyway.